Hi, my name's Lisa. Welcome to Diary of a Tent Wife. Today I'm going to talk about the five best things about my job. I work as an ethologist in a small conservation NGO, rescuing, rehabilitating and releasing orphan elephants back into the wild. This is coming from a quite a long-term perspective. I've been working with elephants now for 10 years. Um, I've been working in a very applied conservation setting in the last five years. I've been living pretty much full-time in the um, national park for the last five years. It might be a little bit specific but I think I think a lot of conservation or animal jobs there'll be a lot of crossovers so I hope this is useful for you. Something in the trees. So firstly there is a huge sense of pride in doing a job like this. You do feel really rewarded although you have very very low times they are it's like extreme ends. <laughs> Um, you have very very low times and you have very very high times um, and I think that feels it's more in this job than other jobs I've had. When you see a orphaned elephant which you thought was going to die and they don't and they live and they thrive and they make relationships and they um, graduate to the release facility or they um, they do well and they're interacting with the other elephants and you look at them and you really think that you've had a strong part in that. Although we get bogged down in all the little everyday things, when you think and reflect on that you often, um, it kind of hits you sometimes. Um, and I think the, the biggest times that it hits me is when we have our partners here or we have any visitors here and you explain everything to them and you explain some of the struggles and that the elephants have been through um, and you know see them in front of you now and you it just gives you kind of a bigger perspective of what your goal is um, and what you're working towards and by talking about it you actually kind of realize it more um, and that's a bit of the reason of why I'm doing this YouTube channel as well you actually realize you know this is a really amazing job and it's a really a, a unique opportunity and kind of how the hell did I end up here um, it kind of puts that into perspective and it really gets you out of the everyday like camp um, issues <laughs> makes it you appreciate the bigger picture Number two, you never ever get bored. In a job like this, you will never ever 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 get bored. I will promise you that. Um, especially in an applied conservation setting like this, you will never get bored. Like there's always, if you think that you have a boring couple of days ahead and you've kind of planned what you're gonna do, you can guarantee that something will come up. Um, and I've I have so many. Oh my god, this is my job moments like sometimes good and sometimes bad but sometimes you just you can't believe what you actually get involved in sometimes when you think about your career or you think okay I'm gonna go in I'm gonna be an ethologist I'm gonna research animal behavior there's so many other things to it that you don't even think about you don't even think that will happen and you yeah there are a lot of those moments it just started raining when we were up at the Boma <laughs> so we had about three waterproof jackets between about 20 people or something. So we're a little bit wet. It is a little bit very, is an understatement. <laughs> very wet and now we've got to, we've driven from Lusaka so now we've got to um, unload our car in the rain and thunder. This is our job apparently. This is our job. What's our job? This is what we do. <laughs> we do random things in the rain. We're waiting for the rain to stop a little bit so we can unload the stuff into our tent. What do you have to say, Theo? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. 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 It's a really positive thing as well because you end up being exposed to things you never thought you would even understand and you get like a glimpse behind the curtains of them. So because I work in a holistic conservation NGO, um, I do hear a lot or understand a lot about um, resource protection, the anti-poaching side of things and the community outreach side of things. And when you're involved in kind of 
strategy meetings or um, you know things that are like outside to do with your job but are outside your main role. For example, I spent a couple of hours on one of the roadblocks with a dog team who were planting kind of bits of ivory in buses and they were training the dogs to detect this ivory for anti-trafficking purposes. It was one of the most interesting things that I've witnessed that is not related to my job, but because I am in my job, um, you get exposed to it. It's really nice not to be in just your bubble all the time and to see the other aspects and the things that play, because it all connects with each other. Everything interplays with each other. Um, there's no point doing the job that we do, releasing orphan elephants back into the wild, if there are poachers everywhere, if there, if there's that kind of lack of education of, of conserving um, the elephants. So it, it really all ties into one and working in an organization like this really exposes you to things that you never thought you would be even a part of and with jobs in conservation with um, small NGOs in particular um, everybody is basically wearing multiple job hats quite a lot of the time so there is no room for boredom so um, I cannot say at all in my career since kind of graduating from my master's um, that I have been bored at all. I've never been bored in my job, not a chance. That might be a, a big positive to go into this line of work. Being able to travel abroad without um, kind of backpacking or um, spending a lot of money, because, uh, you know, when I'm here, obviously, um, we've got a place to stay here. When I'm in England, I've got my family, I've got friends who we visit. Um, in South Africa, the same. So I feel like if I was working in the UK, I would always want to have kind of a holiday in Southern Africa somewhere. I'd probably spend a lot of money doing that for my two weeks holiday. When I first moved to the National Park, I kind of was all about seeing lions and leopards I wanted to see like it was all the big animals that you really want to see if you're in a national park but as the time has gone on I'm appreciating more you know smaller things like the bugs and the trees and um, plants and flowers like I'm taking a lot of pictures of trees and flowers at the moment which um, yeah I didn't really <laughs> I wasn't really that interested in the past and yeah you start to appreciate a, a more in-depth appreciation of nature I think than you would have if you just kind of managed to get out to the bush for a couple of weeks a year on your holiday. Yeah so being able to not just travel but kind of live different lives if that makes sense. A positive for me um, which might not be a positive for other people but I'm going to put it in my pro list is uh, living and working in a remote location because I actually love it I'm an introvert I don't like being around lots of people I don't like um, being in cities don't like living in cities um, so this kind of suits me very well um, you know I do like I'm not saying I don't like people I do like people but it's very like I a couple of days with a lot of people is kind of my max um, and then you know I like my own space and I like the fact that we've got a tent that's kind of away from camp a little bit a little bit more privacy than we've had in the past um, yeah so living in this just peaceful like when we drive from Lusaka here like and I know other people have said this as well when you kind of come through the gates of camp you kind of just feel a bit like and although there are, there are definitely stresses here, there are definitely, definitely stressful situations, it's, it's counterbalanced by how peaceful it is um, and how much of a camp atmosphere there is as well. So it's kind of like a nice step, you, you know, we're not in a tent in the middle of nowhere without anyone. We've got, you know, obviously the rest of the guys on camp um, and but we still have a little bit of isolation and privacy from that as well. So it's a really nice, I feel like it's a really nice setup to live in. I know that previous um, staff who have been here have really struggled with how remote it is and um, not being able to go into Lusaka all the time, not being able to go out whenever you want. Um, it really doesn't bother me at all. It might be because I do have a husband here. Um, so 
not as much alone I guess um, and he's kind of introvert he's an introvert as well so yeah I think it works quite well I think nowadays there's such um, an obligation to reply to something instantly like you can be busy with something and someone can just jump in your life and demand something right now and you feel like you have to reply to it straight away and I think with emails that's a lot easier but with whatsapp nowadays um whatsapp is a really big part of my job and I think sometimes people not knowing that you're contactable that you're in the middle of the bush um it's actually it's really good um I tell you what the most relaxed so during the most stressed period of me working here, which was 2017, my most favorite time ever was driving from Lusaka to out here to the bush. And when you drive, it's like four hours on the tar road and then you take a turn off into a dirt road um, going towards the Tej Deji. And through that whole road, there's no signal at all. So you've got a good, when the road was bad, you had a good kind of two and a half hours solid with no signal. And and everybody knows your movements uh, in your work. So nobody's expecting you to reply to anything. Um, and we used to get on that road and I used to put like really relaxing music on. And I just used to love that. And then when you hit the town ITT, all these messages would come through and oh, I just loved it. I love that just couple of hours of people not knowing that you can't, you know, that they, they can't get to you. <laughs> they can't make you answer something straight away. And our work is very WhatsApp led. It's very immediate. We have, I think I'm on 27 or so WhatsApp groups. Uh, obviously some of them are not that active anymore, but it's always ding, 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 ding. And I, you know, I've been on a played ride before and turned my phone on and it's crashed because of the amount of messages that have come through. So that's Theo shouting about something. So um, yeah, being in a remote environment, sometimes when people know that you, you know, like today it's so cloudy. Um, so if I was working in the office today, you know, there wouldn't be any signal because there wouldn't be any power. So kind of you can give people a heads up and they know that and it's just, it's freeing because you can actually get on with such solid work when you're just focused and you're not kind of checking your phone all the time um, and interrupted. So that's, I think that's a positive, have, being able to have an out on technology, being able to just be like, nope, legitimately I'm out. Um, so yeah, that's a positive on my list at least. It might not be on your list if you were going to do this as a job, but yeah. And although there are busy and hectic times, um, as I talk about in the um, bad video, <laughs> the bad video, um, although there are busy and hectic times, there are really quiet kind of down times where you can focus and concentrate on your work. This is normally in the rainy season because not many people are that brave to come out and visit us in the rainy season. Um, it's out of our volunteer season. We don't tend to get any film crews or um, any, really any donor visits. We do have the odd ones, but there's not that many people out here. And you know, it's raining all the time normally, not this last year. Um, the grass is really high. It's, you know, ticks struggling, walking, can't see the elephants. Um, solar power, hardly any Wi-Fi, like the, the rainy season is very, very different to the dry season and I actually really like it. Um, yeah, I don't mind the rainy season at all. Obviously days and days of rain can be a bit annoying when you can't uh, get any clothes dry. Um, and it's really, really hot, but no, I like it. Oh, there's, what is that? I think that's a book yeah I think that was all of the top things of working uh, in a conservation NGO with animals with research um, I hope that was helpful for you if you are thinking of going into this job uh, hopefully I've convinced you that it's amazing I don't know if I have um, yeah it's really it's a cool job it is um, and sometimes you need to remind yourself of that I think um, which is good because yeah I think everyone's in every job needs to be reminded of the value of their job the grass is always greener right 
after 10 years of researching with elephants and after five years of living in a national park, I, you know, I really do still feel that it's special. Um, and I do feel like, yeah, I could live here a lot longer. So, um, if there's anything glaringly obvious that you think I should have included that I missed, please put a comment below. Let me know if you've got opinions on any of my um, top five, if you've got any questions. If you think this video was helpful or you enjoyed it, please give a thumbs up. Um, please subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell. Please share it with someone who you think will benefit from it. If there's anyone you know that is thinking of doing this as a career, then um, get them to comment below and we can chat about things. I'm happy to give advice. Thanks, bye. Um, and I go back home. <laughs>